Hi, I'm Janet Leeds, and I work at Portola Pharmaceuticals, I'm, where I'm the head of drug metabolism and pharmacokinetics. My co-authors on the work that I'm going to talk about today are Yap Mandama, Genmin Liu, John Cornett, TJ Milling, Mark Crowther, Stuart Connolly, and Pam Connolly. Today I'm going to talk about an update on the PKPD modeling used to determine the indexinet alpha dose to reverse anticoagulant activity of factor 10A inhibitors in patients who have acute major bleeding. Indexinet is a recombinant derivative of factor 10A that's been modified to remove the catalytic activity by changing the active site serine to an alanine. While the N-terminal residue of the molecule was retained to reduce immunogenicity, the GLA domain was removed to prevent assembly into the prothrombinase complex. Now, early in the development of the molecule, phase two dose ranging studies were done to determine the doses needed to reverse anticoagulation. During these studies, healthy subjects were dosed to steady state with each of the direct factor 10A inhibitors, apixaban, rivaroxaban, and adoxaban. On the last day, indexinet was administered three hours after the last dose of the factor 10A inhibitor. On the day prior to and the day of indexinet dosing, rich sampling was done in order to allow determination of indexinet PK, as well as determine the total and unbound concentration of the factor 10A inhibitor and anti-factor 10A activity. All of those elements were used to build the PKPD model. More recently, and what I'm going to talk about today, is the verification of that model using data that we've obtained in the Anexa 4 study of bleeding patients. The slide on the left shows the indexinate pharmacokinetics. And you can see that there's dose proportional pharmacokinetics uh, over the dose range from 90 to 420 milligrams. Further, if you look carefully, you can see that a slow infusion will allow you to maintain the indexinate concentrations. On the right graph, you can see the anti-factor 10A activity decreases rapidly upon indexinate administration while after a bolus that rapidly comes back after the end of the administration of indexina, and the continued effusion allows the maintenance of the reduction in anti-factor 10A activity. Now I think it's important to look at a little bit at the pharmacokinetics of the direct factor 10A inhibitors. While indexina distribution is restricted to the vascular compartment, the Direct factor 10A inhibitors, like all small molecules, are widely distributed throughout the body. And there's an equilibrium established between bound molecule and unbound molecule in each of those compartments. Importantly, the unbound level or, con or free concentration is equal across all those compartments. Any alteration in that equilibrium will cause a redistribution, and Dexanet alters that equilibrium. This is illustrated on the next slide, where you see prior to indexinet administration, you have an equal concentration of unbound levels across all the compartments. Once indexinet is administered and it's stuck in the vascular compartment, the unbound levels go down. And that's illustrated in the graph below, where you see the decreased levels of unbound apixaban, and this is from the phase two study. At the same time, because of this equilibrium and this need to reestablish the equilibrium, molecules from other compartments re-enter the vascular space, resulting in an increase in the total apixaban levels. So at the same time the total apixaban levels go up, the unbound levels are going down. The maximum decrease seen for apixaban is about 2.5 fold. For other molecules, this increase is actually larger, and it's directly related to the volume of distribution. Using the data from these phase two studies, we put together a PKPD model. And this is really quite a complicated model, but I'm gonna break it down to you. The reason it's complicated is you have the pharmacokinetics of two separate molecules, one of which affects the PK of the other. Now, the red, dotted red line here 
shows the indexinate distribution, which after IV administration to the central compartment is distributed in a, a tissue compartment as well, where the blue line shows the distribution places uh, for the factor 10A inhibitors, where it's absorbed after oral administration into the central compartment, as well as two tissue compartments, one of which is a rapidly distributing compartment and one of which is a slowly con distributing compartment. So these mathematical equations that are used to describe the relationship were put together and then the model used to simulate different doses of andexanet that will decrease the anti-factor 10A activity for each of the factor 10A inhibitors at different times after administration and at different dose levels. And this is illustrated in this slide with the rivaroxaban anti-factor 10A activity being decreased by different bolus doses of andexanet. The next slide shows you that at different times after each of the different factor 10A inhibitors, the amount of the bolus dose of andexanet required to reverse anticoagulation decreases concurrent with the elimination of the factor 10A inhibitor from the body, such that by eight hours after administration, you only need about a bolus dose of about 400 milligram of andexanet for each of these inhibitors. And these are the highest approved doses for each of these inhibitors. In the end, using these simulations and the modeling, we found that two doses of andexanet were all that was required to reverse anticoagulation at all the different approved doses of the factor 10A inhibitors, as well as the time, uh, different times after. These are a 400 milligram bolus dose of andexanet administered at 30 mg per minute, followed by a two hour infusion at four mg per minute, or for higher doses, an 800 milligram bolus at the same infusion rate, followed by an eight mg per minute infusion for two hours. So this was all done in healthy volunteers, but the real test was, does this model actually help us understand or reverse bleeding? Do these doses work in bleeding patients? And that's what I'm going to talk about next. An exa 4 is an ongoing open label study where bleeding anticoagulated patients receive one of the two recommended doses. There's limited sampling available, so anti-factor 10A activity is measured prior to an IV bolus, at the end of the IV bolus, at the end of the two-hour infusion, as well as four, eight, and 12 hours after the end of the infusion. And then the relationship between the baseline anti-factor 10A activity and reversal uh, that was derived using the PKPD model was used to predict what we might see in bleeding patients based on their baseline anti-factor 10A activity levels. The study, we were able to use uh, the first interim analysis uh, from an exa 4 and we had plasma levels available from 73 patients. Uh, 39 of those patients were taking apixaban while 34 were taking rivaroxaban. For rivaroxaban, we found that the mean observed percent reversal uh, of anti-factor 10A activity was well predicted by the healthy subject PKPD model, starting at the end of the bolus uh, through 12 hours, and the point estimates fell within the 95% confidence intervals for all of these values. For apixaban, the mean observed percent reversal of anti-factor 10A activity was well predicted at the end of the bolus, the end of the infusion through four hours, and was slightly lower than predicted at the eight and 12 hour time points. In conclusion, the PKPD model for indexinate dosing based on healthy subjects actually was, has been verified by the clinical data in the Anexa 4 study in patients with acute major bleeding. The PKPD model of the interaction between indexinet and the factor 10A inhibitors closely predicted the anti-factor 10A activity reversal for both apixaban and rivaroxaban in patients who have acute major bleeding. It's highly predictive of this reversal, the level of reversal of anticoagulant activity, irrespective of the type of bleed and the level of bleeding in patients. And we'd like to finally thank the people who helped in many of the uh, developments of this model, who were not co-authors. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention.